Hello, I am back to talk to you about week six of Socialize, which is talking about interests. I've just realised that we're on week six and there's only eight weeks, so there's only two weeks left, which makes me sad and slightly disappointed, I suppose. Not because anything has been missed or there's more I want to do, obviously there's two more weeks which I know will be covered, but more so just because I'm really enjoying it. This is the first time that I've really engaged with a group of other autistic people on a more one-to-one -one level outside of Socialize. I think I only really know one other autistic person and it's great to have been able to meet such a diverse group. So yeah, we're there's three females and three males, I think, in my group. And the age range, oh, I'm probably going to offend some people. The age range is potentially 20 to 70, 65, to be safe. I don't know. I hope they don't see this. I'm sorry if I thought you were 70 and you're only about 50. It happens a lot. I'm very good at judging ages. Um. Anyhow, yes, I really wish it could be a forever thing because I feel like I've made some kind of friends and I'm just really enjoying going, having that interaction, learning about myself, learning about the world, learning about people, improving my skills or establishing some skills when I didn't necessarily have them in the first place. I think you need them to be able to improve them. So some of them were just fully established rather than improved. And yeah, that, that's going to be quite a big loss, which is strange because I really didn't want to come at the beginning. When I was offered this about a year ago, I said, no, nope, not doing it online. Don't think that will be possible. Don't think I can manage that. I'm not sure how it's going to be helpful when it's sort of a social and communication thing. I could not have been more wrong. It's been great and perhaps even more beneficial for me at this point in my life that it was online because yeah I spent some time in hospital, I spent some time being unwell where I wouldn't have been able to get to the sessions and now unfortunately I've had to come into another county temporarily which would mean that I'd have to do about a hundred mile round trip to attend the group which right now probably wouldn't be possible. So being online has allowed me to continue, which is great. It's also added an element of safety. I suppose I'm, yeah, not feeling so safe in the world at the moment, especially around men and males. And even though the people in my group are really, really lovely, my brain is in that stage where it just goes, ah, man, not safe, run. But having them online means that there's that distance and I don't feel as vulnerable and in fact I really like some of them, I've got to know them and they seem like genuinely nice people. There's also the element of it being a bit safer in terms of you've got that distance metaphorically as well so kind of, this is a bad example but it's the only one I have. Like when people send hate online, they feel safe to do that because they're hiding behind a computer screen. And not in a negative way this time, but I feel able to ask my questions or say things I think might be stupid because I'm hiding behind my computer screen. It has also meant that I've been able to communicate continuously, ask my questions because I'm able to use the chat box rather than having to make words come out of my mouth which is something I find really difficult, which, yeah, you're probably thinking, you talk a lot, what, what? In the context where there are people and I'm anxious and they're new people or when I have to process and I know I'm not processing quickly enough, then my brain just sort of stops and nothing comes out my mouth. So having a chat box has been great and actually more beneficial for me. Yeah, I think that's, that sort of sums up everything about being online. I 
I just wish every autistic person had the opportunity to do socialise and more than that had the opportunity to meet other autistic people but also to work with the specialist ASD OTs. They, they're brilliant. They've been amazing. I have, I have worked one-to-one -one with one of the OTs for probably just under a year now and it sounds really it sounds like too much to say it's changed my life but it actually has that's not an exaggeration i've learned about myself i've learned about other people i've learned about proprioception and vestibular all this sensory input that i just didn't have an awareness of before i just wish that yeah every autistic person had a lifetime ot with them because they're great and they are the people who are running socialize so that's really helped Okay, I digress, back to the topic at hand, um, talking about interests. So some of you may be aware that people on the spectrum tend to have what is deemed a special interest or special interests. Um, I, I don't mind that, I'm quite comfortable with that. Some people don't like it because I read something where it says if a neurotypical person, so someone without autism, is interested in something then it's just an interest it's just something they like if somebody with autism has something that they like to talk about something they like to do it's kind of pathologized it becomes a special interest it's labeled and yeah i agree that's that's not great however i do i do like my special interests and sometimes when people know they are special interests they might talk to you about them or tag you in videos and that's that's quite nice so yes, a special interest in talking about interests. Uh, it could just be your favourite thing. For me, it can be facts. My favourite things are dogs, dinosaurs and penguins. I like all animals. I could talk about them for a long time. Probably talk about psychology for a long time too, but that's just because it was my undergrad degree. In fact, I could talk about anything for a very long time. Within interests, you've also got hobbies. Um, and one of the OTs wasn't there this week because she's on holiday. We decided that her special interest is Bake Off because we discuss Bake Off every week. We have now given her Bake Off as her special interest. One of the other reasons why I really enjoyed this group, this was probably my, yeah, I think this is probably my favourite session. I say that every time, but I really did love this one. I got to learn about other people's special interests and that's great. The other OT who usually runs it, um, I've known her for probably a year now, she's the one that I work with outside of Socialize. I learned that she likes gardening and she likes food. Now I didn't know that about her and it's just nice to have that sort of puzzle piece of the person like as a whole just adding another thing in. Uh, we also had a guest OT to help facilitate, she was really nice. Her special interest is yoga. I don't really know much about yoga, however I have seen cool videos of goats doing yoga on YouTube and I very much like that. <laughs> and then there are two other females in the group, the older one, she likes art and people which is quite cool, so kind of sociology and it sounded like kind of the history of art. I know very little about that but it's great that she's interested in it. The younger female was saying that she likes films such as Charlotte's Web. I love the book Charlotte's Web. Also a television series called Charmed, which I haven't heard of, but I'm going to look into now because it's nice to see what people like. And also music. And then there was another male in the group. He said he likes paleontology, which is good because it connects to dinosaurs and fossils. So I feel like we can be friends and Power Rangers. He also likes Metallica. I, I don't know what that is. I know it's music, but I'm going to have to look into that as well. So it was just really nice to learn about what people like and a bit about them because, yeah, people's interests do say a lot about them as people. So why might we talk about our interests? For me, it's the easiest thing to talk about. I don't have to pre-plan, I don't have to prepare, I don't really have to think that much. I know these things, this is my topic, this is my area. 
can just talk at the person. Not always the best thing to do, but that's okay. So yeah, it's the easiest, it's the safest. I think also that it does help people to get to know you, like I said before, and it can be a good way to start a conversation when you're struggling to connect or not knowing what to say. The challenges of this are, for me, I don't know when to stop. <laughs> I would happily talk to you about your dog for 11 hours without getting bored. That would be great. People don't tend to want to do that. It can sometimes mean that they overshare. So, yeah, it sometimes gets a bit awkward when someone listens to me talking about dogs and how much I like them. And then they say, do you have a dog? And I say, no, she died. And then it kind of ends the conversation. But I'm totally okay with the fact that she died. She was 15. She couldn't hear or see by the time she went. She had a great life. Um, and I don't mind that, but people... I don't think they know what to say after that. So you can overshare and go into sensitive topics accidentally. People also tend to get bored when I talk to them about dogs or they're like, you told me these facts last week. I like to tell everyone, but then I forget who I've told and people end up having to hear them again. Also that it can get difficult when people don't like your interests. So I worked with a police lady a few years ago and I was really nervous. So I said to her, what's your favourite animal? And she said, I don't have one. I was like, okay. I understand people don't always have favourites, but you could give me like five, doesn't have to just be one. I said, okay, do you have a pet? And she said, no, I don't like animals. And that was mind blowing for me. How can you not like animals? And then she responded, but I do like people. Again, why? Would you like the choice between animals and people? I take animals every single time. So we are very different people. And it meant that I didn't necessarily have that connection with her. I didn't know what to say. Luckily, we were there for a reason and it didn't really matter whether I got to know her or not. But in an everyday conversation, it does lead to you getting stuck or just thinking, maybe I don't want to talk to you. And that's yeah, that's a little bit tricky. And then we've also got sometimes one of the people in the group said that his interests are quite niche. So people don't know what they are and don't know how to talk to him about them or they're just not interested because they don't they don't know. And occasionally somebody else said that they might judge you based on your interest, especially the example was because they might be seen as childish. Um, so maybe, I don't know, I don't really want to give an example because I don't want to judge anything, but say you're 30 and you really like Peppa Pig. Like, I've got no problem with that. If you like Peppa Pig, you like Peppa Pig, that's cool. But some people aren't that open-minded and they might laugh or they might judge you. And then that can be really hard, especially when it's something that you like so much and you care deeply about. If somebody is disapproving of that, well, that can be quite sad. And I then asked whether it was okay to have friends with different interests, because for me, I thought, well, what would I talk to them about? But we established that, yes, it is good to have friends with different interests. Then you can learn things about them, about their interests. And there are other elements to relationships, like if that person's a nice person, there's just, there's so much else. It doesn't all have to be about interest, which was good to know. However, still probably wouldn't want to date a Tory. Probably wouldn't want to date anyone, but specifically not a Tory. Um, I don't know if that, that's an okay thing to say, but that's, that's just, that's how it is. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> And what are the disadvantages as well about talking a lot about your interests? Well, as we said before, people do get bored, which is sad because how can you get bored of dogs? I mean, there are people in the world who don't like dogs. I don't really understand that. I, am, I can appreciate if you had a bad experience with one dog, you might be a bit nervous around dogs, but hating dogs? No. It can also mean you run out of time. This happens to me quite a lot. Um, 
I like to ask people about their pets. I'm very interested in people's pets and how they're doing. But if I've only got half an hour and I spend 15 minutes asking and talking about their pet, then kind of like going off topic, we're not going to fit in what we need to. And then the last one we came up with was it can seem quite self-focused in that you only talk, want to talk about your interest and what you want to talk about. You've got to remember to make the conversation two-way. And alongside when people don't understand your interest or don't know about it, we've got people who, when you ask to try and include them, what interests or hobbies do you have? They say, I don't have any. And then once again, you get stuck. And I do kind of empathise with that because when people ask me what my what music I like, my brain's like, I don't think I've ever heard a single piece of music in my life. I don't know who writes anything. Which is silly because I listen to music most days, but your brain just draws blanks. Um, so I do understand that for some people asking them about hobbies or interests, they might also draw those blanks. Especially when you think it has to be something you're interested in all the time or something you do every week. Like, I really like trampolining. I haven't been trampolining for about three years, but I'd still class it as something I really like and could talk about. And if it comes down to people saying, I don't have any hobbies, I don't have any interests, they're not engaging with your interest, then we go back to week one and we look at worm. So that was weather, occupation, relaxation and media, the safe topics. When you are talking about your special interest or any interest, and people are getting bored, we were taught some visual clues to look out for. So I didn't understand this one, but they were talking about eyes glazing over. And to me, that wasn't something I would recognise because I don't really know what that looks like potentially because I don't make eye contact. I haven't seen that. Um, I did Google it very odd thing to google and all I got were pictures of people's eyes that just looked a little bit shiny but I'm not sure how I would pick that up but I'm going to put that out there for you because you might know and it might help you. Um, people also apparently tend to lose facial expressions so they'll be blank, they'll be neutral, potentially harder with a mask again but if people are interested they're more likely to be smiling or nodding, doing that active listening Again, you can tell this from the body language. Are they leaning towards you? Are they making those sort of utterances like, mm, mm-hmm, yep, which shows they're keeping up with you and they are listening if they're doing it at the right time. If they're doing it at a random time, they're probably not listening and just want you to think they are. And then we've also got speech speed and potentially pitch. So if someone's talking quite quickly, I talk quite quickly naturally, um, they tend to be interested and this is something they're passionate about, they want to talk about. If they talk really slowly, they might be bored. <laughs> so yeah, and again, if the voice kind of drops, they might not be interested and less verbal and visual, but they could try to keep changing the topic. That will mean that they don't really want to talk about dogs just sad but it happens um so once again we learned a kind of a tip or a trick and this is tell check ask so you can talk about your interest you can start by telling them about your interest but then maybe after a minute or two check if they would like to see more is it okay to continue are you still interested have i lost you and then ask at the end so include them do you like dogs i like chihuahuas what's your favorite breed or yeah if you don't like dogs what animals do you like just make sure you're including them again with that conversation so it's like a ping pong thing and yeah i then asked if you can just go up to someone and say i like dogs do you like dogs Apparently not, that's not, this was the point where I got upset that you probably shouldn't say hello do you like dogs and I feel like that's something I do quite a lot um, because that's all I really want to know. I, 
can't say I don't want to know if you're okay or not. I mean, I hope you're okay, but I'm more interested in if you want to talk about dogs with me because, well, that's, that's better than talking about the weather. But you shouldn't do that. You should say, hello, how are you? Maybe introduce one of the worm topics, so weather. And now can we talk about dogs? So you get there eventually. It's just a bit of a slower process to ease the person in. However, it is okay if someone is with their dog and walking their dog. So now I just need to find loads of people who are walking their dogs so I can say, hello, please, can I stroke your dog? Can I also talk to you about your dog? That would make me very happy. <laughs> and yeah, so this comes back to environment, I suppose. One of the people gave the example that they went up to somebody with a baby and approached them and this wasn't potentially a good thing to do because it made the mother tense and potentially be suspicious. I'll admit that I would be suspicious if an older man came up to me when I was with my baby. My first thought would be, oh, he's going to take the baby or why does he want to see my baby? So I think this is where everyone's brain's different and you need to be transparent. So we spoke about how he could say, we're in times of COVID, I don't see many people, the world's a bit of a sad place at the moment. Your baby was laughing and smiling and that made me feel really happy. So I just wanted to come over and say hello. That's very different to just going over to someone's baby and having all that fear. So yeah, it's thinking about your environment, thinking about who you're approaching. And again, disclosure, I'm sorry, I'm autistic. I don't know if I read that correctly. Um, so that's, that's really helpful. And then we've also got clues. Um, so as to what people are interested in, if you want to talk to them about their interest, my backpack has dinosaurs on. So people will know I'm interested in dinosaurs. I stood behind somebody in a queue at uni once and she had an up mask, an up backpack and an up jumper. So I automatically knew she likes up, she likes Disney, she likes Pixar. I can talk to her about that, I know this topic and then you can make friends. And the same with badges, people might have badges or patches from places they've been. People who have dogs tend to like dogs, people who have babies hopefully like babies so you can maybe talk about babies if you know anything about babies i'll be clueless um and well i thought i came up with a great a great piece of evidence that if you're in costa you like coffee and then the ot said i go to costa but i don't like coffee i buy tea and i was like oh no okay so if you're in costa maybe you like drinks but then everyone drinks and again why are humans so complicated but we are, we're getting there, we've got some tips, we've got some tricks further forward than I was in January. So we've got the check-in questions again, as I mentioned before. Is it okay to continue? Do you have time to listen to me talk about this? Would you like to hear about my facts or dogs? Again, with the disclosure, I really like this topic. Can we just talk about this for a little while? As always, we have exceptions to the rule because we always have exceptions to the rule don't like exceptions to the rule if you're giving a talk on your interest you can talk for however long you want and this is why I prefer talking to rooms of 30 people than I do talking to people one-on-one -on -one. because recently I've done talks on young carers I've done talks on autism and eating disorders these are topics I know inside out I can't get them wrong as such and people don't interject, people ask questions at the end, it's a very safe environment and I don't have to think about any social or communication skills really, I just talk at the people. So giving a talk, talk as long as you want about what you're there to talk about. The same, if somebody asks your advice, then you tell them, you can tell them if someone came up to me and said, I'm going to get a dog, which dog? I'll be like, right, you came to the right person. We can look at your house, we can look at your environment, we can look at what breeds you're thinking of. I can research it for hours for you and I would love that. So yeah, if you have a, an interest and someone wants your advice, then go for it, just talk. Um, and also if they know you well, I have a friend, she's now trapped to listening to me talk about dogs and dinosaurs and penguins for hours. Also found somebody 
who has an interest in penguins. So now I have a person I can tag in every single exciting penguin video I ever see. And that makes me really happy because I like sharing my interest and finding other people who feel the same. And the last one they came up with was the environment. So if you really like space and you're at the space centre, it's okay to talk about space all day. If you're at Comic-Con, Comic -Con, I don't really know how to say it, Comic-Con, and you want to talk about, I'm going to get this really wrong, superheroes, magazines all day, those people are also there to do that. That is the niche group. You can talk and talk and talk. At uni, we have societies. If you're in that society, like the Harry Potter Society, you can talk about Harry Potter for hours. So ultimately, interests are okay. Interests are great. They help you build relationships with people. They start conversations. They make you feel less anxious when having to communicate. But just bear in mind where you are and who you're talking to, if the person is, if you're losing them, if they're bored, or yeah, if you haven't given them a space to say anything yet, maybe rein in the interests a bit. So yeah, I really liked this one. I liked being able to talk about my interests, learning about other people's interests, and how I can maybe make my conversations a bit more appropriate in terms of I'm not just firing dog information at people, making sure they have time to talk, checking if they want to sit and listen. But yeah, this was this was a good week for Socialize. And my last question is, do you have any interests? Do you have a special interest? Is there something you really like? If you feel comfortable, maybe you could write in the comments what your favourite thing is and potentially why if you want to. Thank you.